The Four Great Classic Chinese Novels. The Four Great Classic Chinese Novels are four influential and popular works that were published during the last two dynasties of China, Ming and Qing. And while the novels have been around for a long time, the idea of them being the four greats of classic Chinese literature wasn't born until 1982, when a person called Tian Ding mentioned the idea in an essay. The names of the four books are *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*, *Water Margin*, *Journey to the West*, and *Dream of the Red Chamber*. Three Kingdoms Yi, *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*, written and published during the 14th century at around the collapse of the Yuan Dynasty and the start of the Ming Dynasty. This is a novel that started the historical fiction genre in China. It is also one of the first full-length novels to be published in China, at 120 chapters with around 640,000 characters. It covers over a hundred years of Chinese history from the end of the Han Dynasty to the formation of the Three Kingdoms. And the beginning of the Jin Dynasty. The novel is traditionally attributed to the playwright Luo Guanzhong, who lived during the 14th century. As the events of the novel happened during the second to third century, the author drew references from historical documents such as Sun Guozhi and folklore and plays about the period. The novel have a huge influence on Chinese culture to the point that some people forget that it is a historical fiction novel and not an accurate retelling of history. The opening line of the novel is rather famous. 话说天下大事，分久必合，合久必分， which is translated as "The empire long united must divide, long divided must unite." This is how it always has been, which is pretty accurate to Chinese history. Then there is the famous oath of the Peach Garden, where the characters of Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei become sworn brothers, giving rise to this famous line: 不求同年同月同日生，只愿同年同月同日死 which is a must. When taken an oath of brotherhood, it means we seek not to be born on the same day, in the same month, and in the same year. We merely hope to die on the same day, in the same month, and in the same year. And yes, this novel is the inspiration behind the Dynasty Warriors franchise. Shui Hu Zhuan. Water Margin. This is another novel published during the 14th century at the end of the Yuan Dynasty and the start of the Ming Dynasty. It is a historical fiction set during the Northern Song Dynasty, which is the dynasty that was replaced by the Yuan Dynasty. The book is a hundred chapters long at around one million and forty thousand characters. The authorship of the book. Has mostly been attributed to Shi Nian, but it also has been attributed to Luo Guanzhong, who was the author of *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*. Some published versions put them together as co-authors, as Luo Guanzhong was Shi Nian's student. *Water Margin* or *Outlaws of the Marsh* is one of the earliest novels written in vernacular Chinese. It tells the story of a group of a hundred and eight outlaws, led by a man named Song Jiang, who gathered at Mount Liang, and rebelled against the government, only to be recruited into fighting off invading armies and meeting their tragic ends. The inspiration behind the story is folklore from the Song Dynasty about the historical Song Jiang, who, according to records, Did lead a rebellion against the government during the 12th century, although the folklore only attributes 
Thirty-six men to Song Jiang's group, rather than the novels A Hundred and Eight. This novel is what gave us classic literary stories such as Wu Song slaying a man-eating tiger whilst drunk, and Lu Zhishen uprooting a willow tree because the crows on the tree won't stop crowing. Xi You Ji, Journey to the West. The inspiration behind many movies, TV shows, video games, and anime, *Journey to the West* is a historical fantasy novel published in the 16th century during the Ming Dynasty. The authorship of the book is traditionally attributed to Wu Chengen. At 100 chapters and around 870,000 words. The story is set during the Tang Dynasty, and follows the journey of the monk Tang Sanzang, and his three disciples' journey to the western regions to retrieve sacred Buddhist texts. It is episodic in nature, with the protagonist group traveling to new areas and encountering new problems. The novel was inspired by the actions of the Tang Dynasty monk Xuanzang's. Journey to obtain better translations of Buddhist scriptures. I would say the real life story is even more fantastic than the novel, since the monk had defied the emperor's travel ban and smuggled himself out of the country. He traveled across the Indian subcontinent with the help of other Buddhists for thirteen years before returning to China and translating the sutras he brought back with him. Despite the fact. That the monk is the central character in the novel. The most popular character from Journey to the West is Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. He is the strongest member of the group, and he solves a lot of problems they face with his strengths or with his cunning. Journey to the West is heavily rooted in Chinese mythology, and started the boom of fantasy novels in China. Hong Lou Meng, Dream of the Red Chamber. There is an entire field of academic study dedicated to this 18th-century Qing Dynasty novel about the rise and fall of the aristocratic Jia family. It is rather unique because only the first 80 chapters of the book is attributed to the author Cao Xueqin. The last 40 chapters of the 120 chapters published version have been determined to be the work. Of another person, the novel isn't set in a specific period in time, and the conventional interpretation of the novel is that the author was writing about the downfall of his own family. It is unfortunate that we do not have the original author's full story, but there is plenty of foreshadowing for the fate of the characters, and they are mostly tragic. The characters from the book, such as Wang Xifeng, Xue Baochai, and Lin Daiyu are iconic female characters in Chinese culture. The novel also provides a look into Qing Dynasty Chinese society, as the story takes place in a big aristocratic household filled with hundreds of people. There are servants, slaves, nuns, concubines, and relatives, forming a reflection of the society at large. And how people interacted with each other in a stratified society. And there's something to be said about the poetry in the book. The main characters actually start a poetry club, and they create many poems during the course of the book. The most well known is perhaps Lin Daiyu's "Zang Hua Yin," the flower burial, which is also one of the characters' most iconic scenes. The girl, upon seeing the flowers in the garden withering and falling, mourns their loss and goes out to bury them. I hope you enjoyed these brief looks into the four classics of Chinese literature. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Links in the description.